I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to talk a little about smart instrumentation. And second, most important <coughs> is the dream project which uh, the entire country is working on is uh, the virtual lab project and the remote triggered lab. <coughs> I'm going to, if everything works well, I'm going to run a plant by writing a logic. The plant is situated in College of Engineering, Pune. And I'm going to run the plant, I'm going to control the plant, taking care of all safety related issues. When I was a kid, maybe a sixth or seventh standard, a relative came to my house and asked me a few questions. Uh, uh, naturally, the first question was, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm studying. Which standard? I said, seventh standard. Which subject do you like most? I said, mathematics. He said, anything which you do? I said, no. Do you play cricket? I said, no. Do you read books? I said, I read books which are related to my subject only. Turning towards my father, he said, your kid is not smart. <laughs> I, I, was, I was literally amazed. I, I, was, uh, I was literally not knowing actually why is he saying that uh, I'm not smart. What is that which missing? Because I was told that if you're learning mathematics, because normally in those days, nobody says mathematics is my favorite subject. I said mathematics <coughs> and still I'm not smart. What's wrong actually? <laughs> I, I started really uh, asking my father why that person said me I'm not smart. What is that which is missing? My father said, today you may not understand this. You have to continue your study. And then I realized after completing my education in instrumentation, late in 89, 18, 1989, working for industry for five, six years, and I then realized what is smart actually. And then I realized that it's not only mathematics which help you. It's not only one or two books here and there, if you read, that's not what is smartness. It's something more than that. Then I really started understanding the meaning of the word smart and then uh, during the discussion somebody told me so and so is smart I said I got the definition so let me check what is that which he is doing which I'm not doing he was doing the same thing I, I, was, I still puzzled I said what is wrong with me people are not calling me smart <laughs> what is that so, then I said, okay, let's join a teaching profession. Better people will start calling me smart. <laughs> a smart teacher. <laughs> I joined the College of Engineering Pune, my own college, as a lecturer in instrumentation and control, and waited for 20 years for calling my students me smart. <laughs> till date, till date. Nobody called me smart. <laughs> Professor Jha gave me an opportunity to again go back and find out what is that <laughs> which, is, which is not there with you and because of that people are not calling you smart. I said, let me do something. And then, of course, instrumentation is such a vast field wherein smart has become a buzzword. Smart instrumentation has become a buzzword. On top of that, Industry is crazy about that word. Then I said, there must be something in that word which makes industry happy. Let's understand what is that word about. And that's where I said, let's find out what is that. And then I, I find something like this, as far as instruments or as far as sensors are concerned. And then I started correlating this with me. That, am I not communicating over a distance? because I'm involved in virtual laboratory project and a remote triggered laboratory project. I said, yes, I'm communicating over a distance. I'm reaching to various colleges. Am I sending the data, which is not only a process variable. Just to give you a background of this basic instruments, you will find that whenever you put an instrument on uh, the vessel, for example, I want to measure pressure of that vessel. 
and I put an instrument there, I call that instrument as a pressure transmitter and I start working on that and I say that yes, what I am getting out of that instrument is only a process variable. Am I getting something more than that? In most of the cases, the answer to this question is no. What I am getting there is only 5 kg per cm square pressure, 4.8, it has increased, it has decreased and that is it. Nothing is more than that and that is where the smart instrument is something which is giving you more than that, not only a process variable. That is the second point. The third point and which is most important for any industry, which would not happen with me, with you also, with a human being also. If you are going to fail, there is no signal, sudden things. Today you are here, tomorrow you are not there. But as far as instruments are concerned, it is expected by industry that that instrument should tell me that I am sorry, I am going to die, please do something. That is what is expected. And if that expectation is fulfilled, because then I can take some action. And that is where I can start working. And then say that, okay, replace the instrument, maintain the instrument, take care of the safety of the plant, because this instrument is going to fail. So I need something which is related to the diagnostic part of the instrument. Once you have that diagnostic part of it, probably you can move towards saying that now this instrument, tomorrow onwards, there is a possibility that the degradation has started, the instrument is bound to fail, do something. The third thing is of course, which is related to the operators. In most of the cases, all the calculations which you do inside the control system is always in a percentile form because you do not design any PID controller, anything for level, for temperature, you design as a generic PID controller and because of that everything you convert into percentile form 0 to 100 percent. Now whether level is 0 to 10 meter, you say it is 0 to 100 percent. If the temperature is 0 to 200 degree Celsius, you say it is 0 to 100 percent. But an operator will never understand at present the boiler drum temperature is 154 percent or boiler temperature is 54.5 percent. Nobody will understand this and that is where you need that conversion which is called as an engineering unit. Can you have something like this? Can you define that? For example, I am more towards millimeters of water column, not in meters. Can I have that facility as a configuration? Most important thing then is the remote calibration and that is where you will find the the acronym which you have SMART is two types. One is single module auto ranging transducer or signal modulated auto ranging transducer. Both the things, uh, both the things are in place in which the guarantee is remote calibration is possible. You do not have to leave your place. I will just give you a brief about it. For example, you have connected a level transmitter to a boiler and you connecting and reading how much is the level in the tank. Suddenly what happens, somebody says that yes, there is a requirement that every six months or every, every one year, you have to calibrate that transmitter. Now the procedure is very simple. You have to isolate the transmitter, take that transmitter to the laboratory, give the signal according to the drum level, calibrate span and zero, make sure that it is working in the lab, then it will work in the field also you connect it. In the meantime, maybe 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, depending on the case, the measurement is not available to you. Though the control is strictly taken care of, maybe some overriding is there, you take care of that, but the control is not there because measurement is not there. And that is where people started realizing that, can I take care of this problem also? And that problem is basically a remote calibration problem. Then comes the speed. Now whenever somebody is talking about speed all the time, we keep on talking about am I, am I doing the calculations in nanoseconds and in microseconds. Unfortunately, the process which I am dealing with or the processes normally we all are dealing with, these are very, very slow processes. Very slow processes, but the computational power required is very high and the data has to reach with a higher speed to the control system. So somebody who is not giving you that speed, probably there is something wrong. On top of that, you need to know when this particular thing happened, when this event happened. Can I take some corrective action on that? 
and that's the reason you need time stamping on that. So the data is there along with the time stamping. So there is a proof and that cannot be tampered. So it truly it becomes person independent. Then you go on talking about it and you say that yes, I need something called as intelligence. Now the question is, can I have that intelligence? Now the problem is, we need to define what is that intelligence somebody is asking about. The first and foremost intelligence normally people ask in an instrument is, I'm doing some, some configurations and those configurations should get stored and whenever I want to retrieve that and whenever I want to change that without changing my position, I'm sitting in control room, I should be in a position to change those configurable parameters. That's one part of it. The second part of it, the intelligence which is there with the control system, central control system. Can I take few blocks from central control system and take it back to the field instrument and these are basically <coughs> the intelligence which is shifted or the control which is shifted to field. And the reason for that is now there is a very short loop, you have a flow transmitter, controller there only and then an I2B converter and the loop is complete there only. It is something like sending a satellite with all the uh, cameras and all those things and analyzing the signals on earth station. Now what normally happens is you get the data which is with garbage. So the transmission basically is lost in that garbage. You are transmitting lot of data but out of that useful data is very less and that is where the intelligence comes into picture. <coughs> what is next important part of it nowadays is the data security. Now whenever you start talking about security people say that okay security has to be there in internet only because my transaction is related to money, my transaction is related to some confidential information. Why do you need that as far as the plant is concerned? Now there are issues and there were incidences which are reported by industries wherein the data security is not there, there is a possibility that there is hacking of the data. Though you are in a secured network, there is a possibility. So somebody has to give you a guarantee that whatever data I am sending may be high speed data, but that data is secured data. Now that is the requirement, that is the bare minimum requirement and then the last portion of it, the last part of it is integration with the IT infrastructure of the organization. Now you will find it very, very easy because we, you all are working in that particular field wherein there is nothing called as connected with between level 0 to level 1 to level 2 to level 3. Now everybody is saying that everybody should get connected. My managing director should get a dashboard which is related to his data. But that data is basically generated from the plan and I should find out which data is important for him. He may not be in interested in knowing how much is the boiler temperature, drum temperature. He might not be interested in how much is the steam flow right now. But he is definitely interested in knowing how much energy or how much fuel you have consumed and how much is the production. That is what is his interest. But that data is getting generated <coughs> at the field level and that field level data, if you do not make it available at the higher level, <coughs> probably what will happen, he will have to come back and say that I want this report. And in most of the cases we have found <coughs> most of our time is being wasted by generating so many reports, developing so many reports because the formats are all the time different. Everybody keeps on asking, AICT keeps on asking the data, TechWeb office keeps on get asking the data. So many agencies are there, those who are keeping asking you the data saying that you give me this data but I, this data is not available me, with me in a nutshell and that is where the difficulty is. Now that is what we need to look at it and that is where we said that yes, if you encompass everything. If you have this intelligence, if you have the communication, if you are sending the data with high speed, you have the connectivity, you have the configurability, all put together, you can call this as smart. I realize that, oh, these many things are required, not only knowledge of mathematics. You need something more also. You need something more and that is what is called smart. And just to give you a background of <coughs> what is there as a smart and how it started, it's, it started of course with pneumatic system and the beauty of engineering is to solve one problem, we 
propose a solution, we create a solution and we create a new problem and that is a vicious cycle. We keep on doing that and that is where our engineering efforts are. We give a solution, that solution gives you a problem. Then you solve that problem, you create a new solution. You keep on doing that, that is how engineering continues and that is what we call as evolution of instrumentation, evolution of automation. Now, how that evolution is? Started with 1950s to 1970s, if you look at it, it is just pneumatic instruments. Now, those pneumatic instruments were in a way, the distance is limited, the signal is 3 to 15 psi or 0 0.2 to 1 kg per cm square, a pneumatic signal. There is a problem of loss of signal in between because using co copper tubes, you are sending the signal. So, there is distance limitation, there is a limitation of no intelligence. Now, somebody started realizing that, can I have some intelligence into it and then came because the birth of transistor is 1948 and after that electronics picked up, we went on to analog instruments in 1960 to 1980. People were very crazy about electronics and converting all the pneumatic instruments into analog instruments. Now, those analog instruments at least have some sort of additional configurability wherein I started getting the data in the form of 4 to 20 milliampere. It is a two wire transmitter type of a concept wherein I started getting the data which I can transmit over a distance. I am not saying that there is no limitation, there is of course a limitation, but at least you have started sending the data over a distance and that is where the analog instruments came into picture. Slowly what happened, it was initially four wire. I was talking to Ravi while coming from here, so that is the greed which we all are always talking about. Somebody said it is a four wire system, that means here you have power supply plus minus and signal plus minus. Somebody looked at that minus common, can I convert that into three mm -hmm. so that I can say one core of copper wire? That is the greed actually. That is we started saying that can we convert four wire into three wire? by adding good amount of power supply because now in the previous case, the signal and supply, power supply was totally isolated. Now you are making it three wire means you have to take care of power supply fluctuations, power supply problems. So we made it three wire, grid will not stop here. We said that if four can become three, can it become two? The, the question is there, engineers are there, the problem is there, there has to be a solution. Somebody said yes, it can be. It can be two wire also. So, we said that okay, let us have the closed loop wherein we call that as a two wire transmitter. So, the signal and the supply is in the same line. Somebody said yes, it is good, four can become three, three can become two, can two become one? Now, there was a clever person who said, I am sorry, it is engineering <coughs> wherein you need at least two because you need a reference negative and one positive. You cannot make, it. but somebody was there, oh, I can make it zero. He said, I can make it zero and that was the birth of wireless uh, sensing. In initial days actually what happened because of this lot of greed without preparation as far as the technology is concerned, as far as the real problems in the plant is concerned, in the initial days wireless technology as such failed miserably. It could not sustain initially, it was proposed, but somebody parallelly was working on something which that group was saying that I can, you made 4 to 3, 3 to 1, not possible, 3 to 2, now I will make 2, but I can connect multiple signals on 2 and that is where you will find the microprocessor based systems came into existence and initially that hard based system which is mentioned here, which came in existence in 1980s, wherein Retaining and that is where the difficulty in industry, working with industry. Because once the plant is on, once the production is on, once the money started coming, nobody is interested in taking risk, nobody is interested in making experiments on the plant which is running. And that is where, where is the opportunity for you to make certain experiments, do certain experiments. And that is where the heart, they said, okay, I will maintain the two lines without disturbing, disturbing that, I will superimpose 200. 2100 hertz and 1200 hertz plus minus 0.5 volt, then there is no DC shift because it is plus minus 0.5 volt, sine wave, no DC shift. Now what happened because of this, the instruments truly started 
talking. In the initial phases, instrument was sending the data, saying that this much is the temperature, this much is the pressure. So, you have given me a job to measure temperature, I am measuring temperature. But the problem was, whenever you are measuring pressure, there is some effect of temperature. So, you need to know that and you cannot have multiple sensors put together and a bulky system and then said that, okay, now once it is true, I will start sending signal because I am not disturbing your basic signal. And that is where that heart came into picture become very popular, today also people are using heart, but then came a truly, truly digital communication type of a system, wherein you are saying that foundation field bus type of a sensors, wherein you can connect majority or more than 64 sensors in a node communicating on two wire. So, just look at what had happened. In the initial case, if you want to connect 64 transmitters, you need 65 core cable because one is common. In the previous case, it was 120. It became 65 and it became 2 now. Just look at the change and because of this what happened, instead of making 0, it was a wise proposition to first make it 2 and that is where foundation field bus came into existence and today we can now proudly say that the technology is matured enough as far as the wireless is concerned. But still, it is in the domain of monitoring only, not in the control domain, because there are delays. You are taking care of all the uh, wireless stuff, naturally you will have a delay. And because of that delay, in most of the cases you will find today's wireless technology is a bit restricted towards monitoring part of it. And that is how it works. Now, I have shown a red uh, arrow going back to pneumatic. Does that mean that we will go back to pneumatic? It is not that. It is indication that though older technology still not obsolete, there are pockets wherein you will have to use those technologies. You cannot help and that is the reason there is no, nothing called as outrightly rejecting a technology. There is no scheme like this. Because of that what will happen? Sometimes you will have to go back and find out for example, in certain cases and you might, might have uh, read about it, because of the hacking of signal, getting the data corrupt, sending, while sending the signal somebody is taking out the data, in certain pockets, in certain areas, people have started using typewriter though the computer is there. And the reason is that only. Somewhere you need to look at, though the technology is advancing, there are certain limitations. Like engineers, we solve one problem we give a solution to the society, we create new problem. And that is how we keep on working on that. The most important thing is once you have all the sensors put together, then comes the domain of process control, process automation. I am just going to uh, speak uh, maybe for few minutes on that and I will take you to my lab which is situated in Pune around 1150 kilometers away from this place and the plant is there and we will try and we will make sure that the plant is running from here. Let us see speed and all those things how it helps us. But whenever somebody is talking about process control, you need to understand few things. Whenever there is a process control type of thing, there are certain things which we need to understand. First and foremost thing is both the parties. Whenever I say both the parties means instrumentation automation is one group. And the other group is of course, plant related, process related group. Both the groups must realize that there is a need which I am not satisfying being here, so I need automation. That is the first and foremost thing which has to happen. And that is how project starts actually. And if you look at the statistics of all successful projects, you will find all the successful projects are those projects wherein both the parties have worked hand in hand. Chemical engineers, process experts and all those things they are working hand in hand and then saying that yes, I need automation. The second is, the most important thing is there are certain miscommunications, misconceptions about automation. Automation is unfortunately treated as a magic stick wherein if you do it, everything can happen which is not the case. Automation itself has got 
its own limitations. For example, I was working with uh, a, one of the municipal corporation for automating their water treatment plant and the corporators, the political leaders in that corporate corporation asked me a question, sir, you are proposing an automation here, a SCADA based uh, water treatment plant here. Will that increase the rainfall in my township? <laughs> that was the question because you are automating means now all my problems will get solved because the problem is I have deficiency of water. You are proposing this, can you solve my problem and that is where we do not have to paint a rosy picture saying that automation can solve all your problems. That is not the case. So, we need to understand what are the requirements exactly and those requirements which are fitting within the framework of automation and that is most important and that is the uh, very, very delicate part of automation. The second is of course, pre and post engineering where we are very good in engineering aspects of uh, automation. So that is not a big issue, but what is important is the control architecture. What are you proposing? Are you proposing the PLCs and a distributed network and communicating with each other, communicating with the central server? What type of maintenance support you have? You have a very high end technology in place, but there is no maintenance support. If something goes wrong, you have to call the vendor and vendor says, yes, I need minimum six hours to travel and then I will come back to your place and do something. So, whenever we are proposing something like this, you will find that you need to understand what is in your stock, are you supporting that and whether your control architecture and the communication network which is already there, which is supporting that cause. And then you come back to the case which is called as uh, process automation. Now, you must be worried why the screen has gone blank. Right? Is it a problem of LCD projector? Is it a problem of a laptop? Is it a problem of Professor Agashe? Yeah. <laughs> so, what is that actually? See, normally what happens, once you take everything in place and then you start, there is a total black, then you need to look at it and then you start working on automation. It is not that automation, you gave a solution without your involvement everything will work nicely. That is not the idea and that is the reason I just wanted to show you the case study. There are two things which I am going to talk about. Uh, whenever you are hungry, you have to tell me, alright. We can continue till the time because uh, there would be a demonstration after this indicating what is that which is required to automate a plant. And I am going to demonstrate you few things wherein you can practice ladder or function block diagrams wherever you are. The open source compilers which we developed are already available and you can practice them. Those are timers and counters and uh, the XIO and XIC that examine if open, examine if close, all the instructions including PID controller instruction is available. Out of interest, you can check that. There are two things which quickly I am going to mention about because these are the two projects which I am working on. One I mentioned about that Pimpri Chinswood Municipal Corporation where the corporator asked me a question, can the deficiency can be taken care of using automation and there is a second project which I am working on is MIDC which is a very, very prestigious project. Again the same problem. The problem is MIDC is basically a professional organization and they sell water <coughs> to companies. So, the only problem is I take this much from irrigation department, I process, I treat it, I give it to industries, I charge them, both the ends should match, both the ends should match. Today what is happening, nobody knows actually whether both the ends are matching or not. At the end of the year, somebody says that we are in loss, let us go back to the government and ask them maybe some, some extra money for the corporation or industrial development corporation because the data is not available. <coughs> Please keep this in mind unless and until you have the data in hand, you cannot take decision and then your decisions cannot be then smart. You can take only smart decisions based on the data, based on analyzing the data, but the question is where is that data? The data is not available and the SCADA systems or automation systems ensures 
that you have all the data with time punching, all the events recorded, <coughs> everything whatever you do will be recorded. I did this exercise based on my experience working with industries. I said, can I convert all my systems, education systems, because I'm working in an engineering college, and the tough job in front of all the teachers is evaluation. If you give him good marks, others will creep, saying that, oh, he is so and so, so he's getting good marks. If you give less marks, you have to keep on justifying him, saying that, why I have not given you full marks for this. So in that evaluation system also, we said, can we have something like this? Can we initially st start doing, or uh, start working towards that, but my concern in that is, no replacement of teacher, of course, because teacher has to remain there. Only thing is, can we reduce the burden on him? Can we reduce the burden? And the only burden which you will have is in the form of the laboratory work. Whenever there is a laboratory work, in most of the cases, what happens is the conclusion of all the students is same. Come what may. Experiment can be different, but the conclusion is same. Readings are same. We don't know whether they are really spending two hours in the lab or not. And we don't have the infrastructure to capture whether they are doing really or not. So we said, OK, can we have a system like this? And that's where I, I just want to show you a few pictures, few plants, and then we will go to the actual demonstration of those plants. And we will run those plants. Now, whenever we were developing this, we said that whatever a student is doing, it should get captured, whatever all the silly mistakes, because in engineering education or in any education system, the maximum learning happens through failures. Let's accept it and let's appreciate it. So he said, let it fail, doesn't matter. I just want to know, you have failed, you learned a lesson, next time you have not repeated that mistake, that's the reason we are here. And that's where we said that, okay, let's have the plants in place, let's give them freedom to run the plant, let them make mistakes, Ultimately, what we need to look at is for last two hours, for example, I've given you two hours of a slot. In those two hours, what have you done? All, the, all those things, whatever you have done, are recorded. And I get a snapshot saying that, okay, these are the mistakes. Because if I go in those two hours data, around 5,000 data readings, normally we complete the experiment by taking five to six readings. Now here you have 5,000 readings. You just cannot find out the mistake. So automatically, can I get the mistakes? And this is where you made a mistake. This is where you made a mistake. And the problem statement was monitoring of the boiler steam pressure to 5 kg per cm square. You violated that 10 times. While violating, you made a mistake because why you violated? Because you made these many things. PID controller settings were not wrong, uh, not correct the action of a controller was not there, all those put together will give you an understanding, say that these are the weak areas of the students because we are not here to penalize anybody. We are more interested in making sure that he learns. And that's where we said, let's have something like this. So I'm going to just show you some pilot plants. This is typically an evaporator pilot plant will look like, and this is typically a pilot plant, not a main plant. But there can be a scale up approach wherein it's the true replica of a plant, true replica. All the instruments of industry grade, all the pipes and fittings and everything is of industry grade. This is an evaporator plant and this is the remote trigger temperature system. Wherein, I, out of curiosity, for example, I want to know how much is the response time of uh, a RTD. I want to check. I don't know how to check it because those high speed recording devices I don't have, number one. Number two, I don't know what is difference between a bare RTD, RTD with sheet and RTD with thermobel. On top of that, I can maximum take 10 readings. Afterwards, I get bored because it becomes a clerical job type of a thing. So I say that, okay, just continue taking those readings, ask your friend to take those readings and you complete the experiment. So what we did here is you develop your own experiment you start the experiment, the recording of the readings will be automated. So that laborious job which you were doing, we will take it off from you. 
you do intelligence of so what is that intelligence <coughs> after the completion of the experiment i'll give you an excel file of around 1500 readings previously you were commenting on taking five readings now i'm giving you 1500 readings now analyze that data and after analysis find out what's happening where are the outliers where are the points wherein the sensor has not really captured the correct value go on doing that and then find out and it is proved because we have already tested uh, uh, in few colleges it is proved that students are taking a lot of interest in performing such type of experiments where they are challenged they are literally challenged saying that can i use thermobel here or i should not use thermobel this is the application can you tell me that and that's what is this experiment all about and this is typically a boiler and heat exchanger uh, pilot plant which we are going to uh, start with then there is a spray dryer if you look at those uh, plants you will find that those thermal processes the basic process a conversion processes and then bottling processes or the chemical reaction like in a bioreactor all those processes are captured and then these plants are set like a distillation this is a separation process all those processes are put in place so as to give them an indication that these are the processes which you will require to handle are you ready otherwise it becomes a shock when uh, industry guys said that oh you have the degree but you don't have hands on so where is that hands on this is the hands on which we are talking about and a small control room wherein you can operate these plants now i'll go to the demonstration and see how these plants will uh, be useful for me yeah this is uh, a basic framework which we have and uh, i'll just brief you about this this is a framework wherein you have two types of experiments one is simulation based simulation based experiments means those experiments they do not need any infrastructure only wireless or the connectivity to the server it's no registration required no fees for that so you can do your experiment whenever you are free this is called a simulation based experiment in that you have one experiment or one laboratory on programmable logic controller so you can develop your lo own logic you can save that logic and that's the beauty of this entire framework you can save the logic and tomorrow you may say that yes now i want to check and convert and see what was the problem <coughs> once i do that <coughs> i can go on implementing my logic so there is a possibility you can save that there is a possibility you can complete this experiment and physically then run the plant the idea is once you have gone through that rigor of simulations you have acquired a little amount of maturity then you are asked to register for this and book a slot the slots are available wherein you will say that okay i wish to work 7 to 9 2 hours i want to work because then i am free these 2 hours i am free my college is closed at 5:30 i am free i want to work is there possibility yes it is there so you can book a slot and get the control of that entire plant once you get the control of that plant you will develop everything you will get all the information about the plant how to run the plant not the answer and there would be a problem statement saying that maintain the steam pressure overshoot should not be more than 0.5 kg per cm square at any point of time pressure should not go above 0.5 kg per cm square. maintain the pressure and then we will keep on internally we will keep on changing the load on the boiler naturally pressure will fluctuate and we will check how you are controlling the boiler and if you are controlling the boiler properly probably you will uh so there is a sign in now what i have done i created one student who has gone through all the rigor because i want to demonstrate you and i don't want to take test here so i created that scenario and i said that okay this is a student who has booked a slot and uh, he has been given some credentials those credentials will go to your account in a safe manner and then uh, what you will do is you will check yeah this is a framework wherein you have test also so you can give a test you can download the inst uh, the instruction manual you can have upload your documents you can upload your results for your teacher you can take a course for example in a course i am interested only in plc i will take a course related to this i can send a message to my teacher i can get messages from my uh, the colleagues also and it i can form a group i can book a slot 
I can even attend a webinar. So what I will do, I will go to remote test, remote, and you will find that for this student, his name is Sadiq Tambori, who is my MTech student, I reserved a slot for him, which says that he can perform experiment on evaporator plant, he can perform experiment on boiler, he can perform experiment on temperature, he can perform experiment on distillation column. So these are the experiments, out of that, what I will do, I will just check if I can take this uh, boiler experiment. And this boiler, I wish to work using DCS. Now this student is given the entire access to the system. Now this is the framework, like you are doing your ladder programming. Similarly, in a function block, you will have the blocks available. So you can, I will just check, I will just uh, do a small uh, program for you. For example, I just want to switch on the uh, heater which is connected to the boiler. This is electrically uh, heated boiler, 3.5 kg per cm square, around 30 kg per hour steam I can generate. And then I want to control that temperature using a PID controller. So I have these instructions available with me. Like I have PID, <coughs> limit instruction, compare instruction, math instruction, timing instruction, timer and counters. I have logical operations and I have a counter also. Out of that, I will just pick up the and I will connect it. This is the soft connection. I connect this. Now this a student has already done in the simulation mode. The same framework we are using. So here, once he gets the time, he starts working on that. I just want to show you, if I can show you a camera, so that uh, a student is given the access to camera also. So now what I have done, now I have to connect this digital output block to a physical connection. So what I am now doing is, I have already the tags attached to that. So I am saying that I want to switch on a heater. So whenever I say switch on a heater, and then what do I want to do is, I want to measure the temperature reading which is connected to TT1 is the tag which you can get from the board and I want to give this signal to the SCR so that I can fire the SCR and once I have done this, I just compile this program, then I run the program, then I download the program. All right. Now once the program is downloaded, now what has happened, physically I have downloaded program in the local server of COEP and that is what I am checking. The only problem is. Uh, I just check if I can show you some. Now, till the time, le let us see how it works. Now, after you complete this, what you can see here is the mimic. And the mimic means the life of this plant. Now, just look at this. At present, the heater is off. Level in the tank is around 95 percent full. The temperature is 42 because they have already raised the temperature to 42. The steam pressure is not there because we have not yet started it. And a student can see how the plant will look like. This is basically a mimic of actual plant. And all the readings are there. For example, this VFD at present, the uh, heat exchanger side we have not started. Now what I will do is I will go to the heater. All right, and I start the heater. Now I will give a digital command to this. This has become 1. Now the heater will become 1. Now this has become 1. And if you go here, you will find that after some time, this will become 1. Okay. So physically what is happening is I am switching on. Now this has become 1. Got it? So physically the heater in COEP is now on. And you will find after some time there is a rise in temperature. Similarly, you can change the pressure, you can change this. And most important is you can now configure a PID controller. Now this is where the learning comes. Now whenever you want to learn a PID controller in most of the cases, what happens? The response from the process is really not considered properly. 
you have to physically get the response from the process and then tune a PID controller. I just give name to this uh, PID controller as PID1 and I select in auto mode. So this is fully configurable open source PID controller which I say that okay, I want to test whether how it works on direct acting. Then I select whether I want P, PID, whatever I want I can select and I can select what should be the set point, what should be the maximum value which should go. If somebody says, if a clever student says that heater should not be fully on, I want to test it first 80 percent, so he can do it 80 percent. So this is the configurability which is available and you can submit this as a PID block. Now your PID is configured, heater is on, temperature will go on and then you can find out what do you want to check. I want to check the trains and I want to check how my SCR is working. So how will it set the values of KPKI and KD will automatically uh, optimize those values? No, value? no. Yeah. We, have we have to because it is a learning for basic PID. Once you use the model predictive, there you have the optimized values and all those algorithms. But in this case, we expect student to learn <coughs> basic things of PLs or the PID controller. That is the idea. Then you can check here the trains. It will take some time because you are passing the entire data, getting the entire data and you will So a student can see the train and a student can check, I'm very slow. I am just switching off it. Now because of the connectivity, if it is uh, slow, you will find this difficulty. But at the back end, the plant is running and the plant is safe because whenever there is a disconnectivity from here, the server takes charge of this because he knows that this user was logged in. Now he is not using, so it will force all the IOs back to its original position and then you can start your programming once again. Now this is how you can learn and this is how you can run a plant, learn few things about the plant. Most important is all the safety features required to run the plant. For example, the temperature should not go above 145, level should not go below 30 percent because if the drum is empty and you keep on running the heater, there would be a disaster. So pressure should not go above this. If the pump is running and there is no water circulation, you stop the pump. All those basic precautions are already taken two ways. One is hardwired interlocks which we have provided. On top of that, we have provided soft interlocks through our local server. So even if you wish, even if a student wish, he cannot make mistake or he cannot damage the plant. He can make mistakes, I am sorry. He can make mistakes, he can learn from the mistakes, but there is no damage to the plant at the back end. And then what will happen at the end of the day? He will learn new things, full freedom is given to him and with that freedom, he can enjoy the learning. That is the idea which I, I just wanted to uh, present here. But now, uh, any questions from your side? I have done with my stuff. Is it available outside your campus? So can these guys can access this? Yes, very much. So you just tell them instructions and instructions in it. I think this is much better. Yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, just do one thing so that uh, just to get a feel of it. Yeah. Just give me a couple of minutes. The URL and other things. Is yeah, everything I'll show. It's basically vlab.co.in, and if you want to check uh, COEP's lab, PLC specifically, it's coep.vlab.co.in. You will go to uh, this page, which is, uh, and under this, under electrical engineering, you will find a lab of programmable logic controller. And there are eight experiments. I'll just pick up one, just to give you a quick demo. So this is available to you. Like aim, what is the objective? What is the theory behind this? Everything is available. You have to learn. The only expectation from the students is you need to learn this stuff is available. And after learning this, you will go to the simulator. Now the simulator is available and this is the simulator. 
like industry. There is so what I can do is uh, I go to basic, I add one rung, and I say that okay, I want to add here one open contact, one close contact, maybe one. Right, and then I can tag that because you are expected to tag it as a standard practice. If I say that yes, this is a start for example, then this is the stop and I want to switch on this lamp. That is my basic logic. So, I call this as lamp and then what I am supposed to do is I will compile this program right and then I run the program. Whenever I run the program and then I can toggle this bit. Once I toggle the bis, this bit, naturally my logic says that if start is toggled, stop is not toggled, lamp is on. So, if I say that now the stop is toggled, right. So, there is one NO contact, there is one NC contact, there is one output. The most important thing here is you will find here timers, counters, all arithmetic blocks, comparative block, jump instruction, control instruction like PID control is also there and the logic like is and the logic instruction also you can have. All the instructions are there, yeah. Is this equivalent to any CLC model or this is irrespective of the, is a generic program? It is a generic program because uh, the idea is the hardware is not connected. It is offline simulation. Okay. okay, but if one needs to download this into a uh, real system, what happens? Yeah, no, no. At present, I will tell you, we are working on that communication between hardware and this software. We are working on that, and there is a possibility that we will do it. But I think this is wonderful. You should give a class. Any question? You are just expecting this. Without you, we are just discussing that they are looking forward to have some kind of a simulation platform. So Sir. what I am just communicating them, they should be able to do practice after this. When I think this is one that you got it. Whenever you want. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really uh, wonderful. Yeah, that's. So whenever. Uh, in fact, uh, morning we just did some. Uh, PLC program, PLC program. Yeah, so they can do the practice on this yeah. and all sort of instructions as you have mentioned, it is wonderful, it is covered most of the things that you need to learn. Dr. Gache, the PLC program says, if this crowd confirms that you are smart, then you should cancel your ticket and <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. It is a so much. session as I, I should thank Dr. Gache. Uh, any question? Yeah, yeah, please. Do we need to book a slot for this compiler? Yeah, uh, for this compiler, you don't have to book a slot. Okay. For but for remote trigger experiment, remote. if you want to use my plan, you have to no, book no. a slot. Uh, sir, only for this part. Uh, no. Offline simulation. No, no, absolutely not. No kind of login no, or nothing. No registration required. We don't expect any information from you. The only thing which we expect is after completing the experiment, please write the feedback because that will give us a chance to improve. So, it's a bonus value in this course, you get a free yeah. yes, PLC simulator. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 no, no, nothing. See that MHRD has supported this entire program and for three years they have supported us. So, there is no fees even for running the plant. Only thing, no, no fees for running the plant. Only thing is we expect teachers to take initiative. Instead of giving the access initially to students, let college teachers should take initiative say that, okay, now maybe like, uh, yes. like this, we will demonstrate. Let us uh, tune a PID control. It is really wonderful. So that is possible. Really nice. So they are declaring you smart. <laughs> <laughs> so my search after 30 years is closed. <laughs> Thank you so much.